Just a couple bad weather fans representing New York Talking all things sports, man what could go wrong? We got Alex who's a fan of the Knicks and Mike of the Nets The yin yang of the tri-state place your bets On the Yankees, Giants, Mets or Jets Yeah you should listen if this sparking your interest If you made a vow to your team don't break it Bad weather fans is the relation, relation, relation. That's right, this is Bad Weather Fans, episode number 134. Mike Viseglia, Alex Benesowitz. Last time we had the emergency podcast as Donovan Mitchell got traded to the Cleveland Cavaliers. And the Brooklyn Nets right now in a state of normalcy, I'll say, as we gear up for the start of the 2022-2023 regular season. Still some more free agency to sort out in the next couple of weeks. Will Julius Randle be dealt, etc. And football is on its way. Alex, how are you doing? I'm doing well. I'm doing well. Another day, another day that passed the Donovan Mitchell debacle and uh, another day that Julius Randle's still on the Knicks. You we'll pissing enough people off on Twitter? I think so. I think so. But it's all good. It's all good. Listen, I'm going to give give you guys and, and women what I feel and that's it. And if people don't like it, they don't like it. I don't really care. <laughs> it's just my opinion. I know. I'm just having fun. I'm yeah. busting your chops. I'm busting that's your it. balls, Alex. Of course. I, I like it because it makes me... Um, galvanize us me against other nick fans which is always yeah. fun and nets fans like, oh, like me that's what's yeah. funny now i, now I nets fans I, agree I, right i know <laughs> I'm change it to net central uh, i do want to mention as well excited that we've mentioned this before but DraftKings part of the bad weather fans family so football fans listen up the first sunday of the nfl season is here it's right around the corner and draft in DraftKings sportsbook an official sports betting partner of the NFL is giving new customers a can't miss offer to celebrate the return of the NFL season Right now, new customers can bet just $5 and get $200 in free bets instantly. And as, a, and as an added bonus for week one, everyone can experience the thrill of DraftKings early win promotion. It's simple. Bet on an NFL team to win. If your team leads by 10 at any point during the season, you get paid instantly, even if your team loses. Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app now and use promo code BWF. That's promo code BWF to get $200 in free bets instantly when you place a $5 bet Sunday. That's code BWF only at DraftKings Sportsbook, an official sporting bets partner of the NFL. Minimum age and eligibility restrictions apply. For more of those details, see the show notes on our YouTube page or if you're listening via podcast, wherever that might be details on the show notes alex right and we were also sponsored by our president nick's president at dolan underscore j underscore trump on twitter we use promo code bwf for 20 percent off all items on dolanjtrump.com make nick's great again okay mike which you, you were trying to, you to say. Which, which you were <laughs> trying to illuminate yes yes so quentin grimes untouchable huh yeah, that, that kind of pissed me <laughs> off in a lot of ways. And I'll, I'll, I'll center this with a Nets conversation yeah. because we were having this conversation because people are like obsessed with Quentin Grimes thinking he needs to start, needs to do this. But if I, I've thrown this out, out there to a couple of, of Nick fans everywhere. And I said, well, what do you think of Dayron Sharp? And they go, I don't know. He's a he's, he's a second year player. He's, he's whatever. He's a bum. He's a young, what does it matter? I'm like, well, let, like Dayron Sharp played 12 minutes a game, averaged six and six. What if I told you? that Dayron Sharp was the most untouchable player in Nets franchise and couldn't be dealt. You say, you're an idiot, Mike. You, you, would, you would come to me and go, Mike, you're an idiot. Yep. Don't say something like that. Make a deal. Right. Oh, I know. Nets are in a different position. They have stars already. But the point is, the disillusionment from Nick fans when they hype up their own players is honestly vomit-worthy. And it's getting to the point where it's just so simply annoying. I can't take it. I can't, I can't handle the hype meter for players like this is here's a perfect example from everybody oh uh porzingis now people's on porzingis wasn't very good maybe it was just that he was hyped up from the knicks and they thought and and, and and had that feeling that he was better than he was because nick fans hyped him up the nick fan does this one thing where they hype up players and then they get on them right they hype up guys and then they hate them like patrick ewing was never good enough for the nick fans carmelo anthony was never good enough for the Knicks fans. Amari Stoudemire was never good enough for the, for the Knicks fans. 
But then at the same time, they hype up the guys while they're coming up, and then and then they'll never achieve what they're looking for in their greatness. Like Patrick Ewing's one of the best players in the history of the goddamn NBA, but yet he's you you look back and it was like, well, he wasn't Michael Jordan, <laughs> you know. <laughs> it's no, always I, it's always yeah. something, and it's just annoying. And the Quinn Grimes part brought it out of me. So I was like, what if I just went on my soapbox and talked about how on net spaces and go, I wouldn't deal Dayron Sharp in a trade if it made the Nets better. You'd say I'm a fucking idiot and you would get all over me. So I don't yeah. understand this, 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 the, the hype meter for Quinn and Grimes. I, it, it blows my fucking mind about it. It, it. it blows, it blows my mind. Now, Nick fan, tell me, is Dayron Sharp, he played, he's, he was, he was picked two, two or three picks later than Quinn Grimes. He played 12 minutes a game. He showed that he's athletic around the rim and he can rebound. He had a very good summer league. What am I missing? Like, why why can't Daron Sharp end up being the better pro than Quinn Grimes? When did Quinn Grimes become anointed as the next Allen Houston? I stole that part from you. <laughs> yeah, well, that's what they say, and that, that pisses me off too. Well, what's funny is that if you put Sharp's face, Daron Sharp's face, and set, and put somebody else and said this was Daron Sharp, I would believe you because I, I I honestly can't even picture what he looks like. Well, he and he played I, I a know bunch. I've seen him play. Yeah, but I'm just saying, like, if you just gave me his headshot oh, and said this was him, I was like, I, okay. But, but remember, <laughs> you know? remember too, like, remember too, the yeah. Nets went through a lot of shit this past season. So there was right. a point, where, and especially during that COVID spell too, where he had to get a lot of minutes and play and play. Especially mm-hmm. when the Nets were depleted at the center position, there was a point where he was getting some serious run and looked good. Yeah, it looks very good. And and there's a reason that, you know, Andre Drummond's not around anymore. They figure they save the bill. And on your rookie contract, you, you move Claxton moves up a spot. Dayron moves up a spot. But but it's just getting on my nerves. The uh, the Quinn and Grimes hype machine where you can't include him in a deal for Donovan Mitchell. Oh, great. <laughs> Yeah, it's kind of funny. Uh, you know, I, I don't it's just funny with Knicks fans where and generally speaking, Knicks fans, not everybody. But they'll hype up their own players, uh, their own rookies and young guys. And anytime there's a star or an all star available or a star caliber play- caliber player available, they'll take a giant dump on them. <laughs> we talked about this last episode with DeMar DeRozan, De'Aaron Fox. Um, who are the other guys? Donovan Mitchell, DeJounte Murray, like all these guys that have been available that the Knicks could have gotten if they really, really tried and really wanted them. That Knicks fans are like, these guys stink. But then, you know, Quentin Grimes is Allen Houston and Emmanuel quickly is, is the second coming. And it's just RJ Barrett is, is the greatest player in the world. And I love RJ Barrett and I think he could be a star and I think he kind of is a star already, but at the same time, um, Nick, the Knicks don't believe that because they offered him instead of giving up a, a pick in the future. That's some kid who's currently in middle school right now. They, they offered him in the trade to the jazz instead of giving a fourth pick. So you d- can't tell me that the management thinks the same way because they don't besides Quentin Grimes, which is for some reason untouchable. And even Alan Hahn has been throwing shade at the Knicks for that. Like, come on, you know, if he's untouchable, if you don't want to trade him for Donovan Mitchell, then you can't give me Evan 48 for 80 games again, starting 82 games starting. You can't do it. Cause he started 80 games last year. And now Quentin Grimes is like, you don't want to trade him for an all-star. So guess what? He needs to play every game. Guess what? You need to trade Julius Randle. You know, but at the same time, they won't do that. It's it's just we're in backwards land, like I said last time. And it's embarrassing because the Knicks were on the one yard line for this trade all summer. But instead of handing the ball to Marshawn Lynch, they threw a slant in traffic, you know, and it got intercepted by the Cavs. So it's just it's frustrating, man. And it's just like, where are we now? You know, if you were if you were a content creator and I'm just speaking broadly to the audience and there's a lot of content creators that listen to that this. term, too. Man. Well, well, <laughs> the, and if you had the opportunity Yes. To speak to Leon Rose on your podcast, mm-hmm. on your YouTube page. Would you say yes or no? You'd probably say yes. What would you ask? What would you ask him? Because I know, I know that you don't like the media because they're hard on him. So in not, if, if you're a content creator and you have Leon Rose on your podcast, what would you ask him? Because I don't want you to be hard on him, right, Nick fans? You don't want to be tough on management. If you had Leon Rose on your show, what would you ask him? But again, let's not be tough on him. Because that's what Straight the media up. does. That's what the mean media does. Right. What would you ask them to make sure that it was pleasant and friendly? What would you ask them? Why didn't you offer more picks? And if he says I did, and uh, I mean, it depends on how he answers to see if I would believe him. But my first question would be like, why didn't you offer more picks? I get you don't want to just trade a million picks for everybody. And, and you know, uh, we have PTSD from the Isaiah Thomas and Scott Layden era as the Knicks do. Sure. But Donovan Mitchell is not like Stefan Marbury. Donovan Mitchell is not like Eddie Curry. Donovan Mitchell is not Jamal Crawford. Donovan Mitchell is not Steve Francis. Donovan Mitchell is not 
any of these guys that you gave up so many picks for because he is younger than they were. He's, he's better. It, it's just, it's so hard to explain, but at the same time, you can't tell me that you wouldn't give up. You can't tell me the whole summer that you have the most assets to trade and then you don't give up the assets to trade for him. So then you, whether you had the most assets or not is irrelevant and it deemed irrelevant because the cat, the Cavs swooped in and took them, you know? So it's, it's, we're going backwards and I wanted to go forward and like talk about the aftermath of all of it and go forward with it, but it's really hard to, because the Knicks really dragged their feet. And the other thing that's funny, excuse me. The other thing that's funny, the hypocrisy from Knicks fans out there now praising, uh, you know, using Bill Simmons or Frank Isola as a way to prove their point. Like, look how great of a job the Knicks did by not trading all these picks for Donovan Mitchell. When these guys have been trashed for the last 10 years, since I've been on Twitter of the worst people in the world don't know anything. And now all of a sudden, Oh, look, they said that that was great. <laughs> you know, like they said it was a good move. Well, you can't be like these guys are idiots or Zach Lowe is another one. This is the guy who picked Terrence Davis on the all rookie team over R.J. Barrett. And we trashed him for a month for it. But now Zach Lowe said, oh, it's a great job by the Knicks not giving up all those picks. And now, oh, oh, look, look how great of a job it was. You know, give me a break, man. Stop excusing this crap from this organization. And maybe they'll 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 care. You know, they, they're playing you guys, playing you guys. It's OK to admit that the Knicks did something wrong. It's OK to admit that the Knicks mess this up it's okay to admit that and then just move on you know and that's what we're trying to do here but it, whatever they punted I, on the lottery for leon rose's nephew and and now we're here and we have jalen brunson and isaiah hartenstein we dropped a bunch of dead weight and now we're we have the same or same team essentially wood tibbs is 64 years old and is going to start fournier and randall and i you know i'm not very excited for the season and it sucks but i'm still going to root for them they're still my team i'm still going to go hard for them and i'm still going to to try to hope that they that they play well but you know i, I tweeted out the other day at nick central that on Twitter that, you know what, I wish I didn't know as much as I did about my teams because maybe, you know, I would be a little bit more blindly hopeful or Homer, maybe like, yeah, we can do it. We can make the playoffs. Like, just like, we're going to be a 10th seed at best, unless RJ Barrett takes a major, major, major step. But you know what? The Knicks don't believe that because they were willing to trade him instead of a kid in middle school right now. So what are we I, now? I, I do, I do, I do find it funny about um, bending narratives to fit the one that you want it to fit right. in. And that's where the, uh, the media members does come in because you clearly then if, if you're going to trash media and say how bad they are and how this they are, and then, you know, go run to them when they're saying something that you agree with, you right. have to almost, I don't know how you, I don't know how, I guess everybody has different opinions at different times, but when you're going to, and I say it this way, when you're not going to say something, when it's always something like, yeah, you know, this media member said something, I don't agree with him, but I understand his perspective covering the team. When you go out there and trash, I'm saying trash media members, call, call them out, call them names, right. try to discredit them. That's where I have a hard time then coming back to, oh, I'm going to agree with this opinion. <laughs> When you've said before, like you could disagree or, or agree with somebody, but you have like a respectful back and forth. But when it's trashing the organization or trashing the media around the organization, but then agreeing with it when it's when it's time to agree with, that's the part that's a little uh, little nasty for me. And man, I I mean the East is fucking ripped this year. I mean the East is ripped. There's gonna be teams that are in the play in that are gonna be major players i mean yeah. very good uh I, the hawks getting a lot better i mean they're 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 there i mean the nets I, i'll say this i think bullshit aside i think i have a good feeling with the nets because there's going to be for the first time in a long time not everybody like all over them in a positive way there's going to be people that have a negative attitude towards them hmm. and, and good for good or bad like kyrie irving i think is going to come out and have a batshit crazy significantly well, he wants to get year. paid yeah, yeah exactly paid. yeah he's gonna he's on a contract year and all this not doing it for you said, no, that's... <laughs> oh I, I have i have i have a weird positive feeling going into this because it's not for the first time like all right we got him all, like harden in camp there's all these question marks with with no it's not a, it's ben simmons is he healthy kevin durant does he care kyrie irving will he disappear there's going to be an under the radarness about the nets for the mm. first time which I think will play into them very greatly. I have a weird optimistic feeling about their regular season. Like they're going to come out and give a shit. And maybe that's hopeful thinking. And I've been proven wrong. That can be proved wrong easily. 
but I have a really solid feeling that this year's Nets are going to come out like hell on fire, whatever the term is here, and just come out here and and bust it up. I, I don't know why. I just I just think so. They just I'm optimistic here, but they've just they they have to give a shit. But to the original point, the East is stacked. Yeah, the East is, and with the Nets, I, I feel like they're gonna the first two months. I feel like they're gonna come out guns blazing. Guns you blazing. Know? That's the word I was looking for, Alex. Yeah, thanks for phrase. thanks for picking yes. me up earlier when I was struggling. Thanks for being a good part. <laughs> I didn't think of it before. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. All but I, I really think they're gonna. It's it can go two ways, honestly. And this is not breaking any news here. So it can go two ways. They can start off like 15 and two, or they're gonna start off like seven and whatever, seven and eighteen, and to be like, what the seven fuck? and eighteen? <laughs> I'm just, I'm just making up seven numbers. Seven and here. eighteen. That, okay, five hundred. Five hundred. Okay, so like they're either gonna be crazy good or like like an average basketball team, you yeah, know? Because and then that. seven and eighteen. Fine. No, I'm just right. make. I'm just trying to make up numbers here. Okay, don't kill me. I'm sorry, but um, and because it's just even if they even if there are, it's this is gonna sound really weird. And I just thought of this, so don't kill me again for my thoughts, all right? So it's off the top of my head. It might even be better to start off average, to stay below the radar, and then come on strong. Then if you start off, you know, really, really hot and start riding high, maybe Kyrie gets cocky again, Durant gets cocky again, and they're like, you know, try to, like, dictate things and be like, we run the run this team again, and egos get involved all over again and starts into a big mess. You think there's something there with that? I think that's, I think there's always something there is that, okay. but I would say considering what they're coming off in the off season, and this is the factor that will creep into it. The Steve Nash factor. Yeah. I think for him, <laughs> because if they're, if they're bad with him could create more drama, maybe in the long term it's better if they get a new coach, but I think for this organization coming off, what was such a putrid last season into off season plus really basically since Basically, since Kevin Durant's foot was on that line and the next season started, like it's been such a disaster for what's happened to the organization. I well, think injuries positive... screwed you that year. Injuries well, well, but really I'm just saying negative yeah, yeah. negativity since that yeah. moment, it's just been all downhill. Basically, right. I would say that it's really important for this team to get off to a good start to keep the positive vibes. Now, does that is that a uh, ramification? Is there positive vibes? Is there positive no, no, no? Vibes I'm saying to to, to 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 start off good to keep yes, those positive to get vibes. a positive. Well, not right vibe. right now. Yes. It's not. <laughs> but I'm not, saying yeah. if I think for them to start off 16 and five, 16 and four, 18 and six, that's important because remember, remember last year the Nets were the. This is wild. Here's a, here's something crazy. to think the Nets were the one seed at like yep. 20 and six, and then Durant got hurt. Mm-hmm. So he that's makes nothing it, can happen. Yeah, right, right, right. Easy. Well, that yeah. that 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 that's is not that's a different. That's, yeah, that's not a vibe news. thing. That's old that's news. Just, yeah, that's yeah, just yeah. knock on wood. But like, that's where he's healthy. He cares. All these things impact. But to your point, sure. I mean, I guess it's anything's possible with with the Nets. That's yeah. for sure. Anything, anything is possible. And Ben Simmons is is another wild card. Goes into this season again as another wild card. Last year we talked about it on this podcast. Over and over the entire season, like the Sixers, though. But if Ben Simmons shows up or they trade him, where is he going to go? And that team that gets Ben Simmons now has Ben Simmons, and now you're the Nets. And it's like, Ben Simmons, is he going to show up? It's It's going to be crazy. He'll be, I mean, I think from a national perspective, seeing how Ben Simmons plays this year will just be really interesting. I think all basketball fans, Nets fans, um, and Sixer fans particularly, but I think all fans will really be curious to see. What kind of season Ben Simmons put together? He didn't play last year. He had a disastrous postseason where he was a mental men, mental layup issues where he couldn't take any shots, and mm-hmm. that was a major problem for him. I think I think people are going to be really curious to see what he looks like, and from a fit perspective, I think it'll be interesting too for the Nets because he's a guy that needs the ball in his hands as a creator. But then you're taking you know the ball away from Kyrie and Durant. Now I think personally. If you put Simmons in the point guard position and let him distribute, move around, and get Kyrie and Durant available shots, I think that's a cool thing. I mean, I, I don't know if how that will go because Kyrie and Durant kind of need the ball in their hands. Uh, so then do you put Simmons at the five and let him be more of a disruptor, a defensive rebounder, somebody that can get in the passing lanes that's and crazy. do all the dirty work? Basically, yeah. be like you know the the Nets the Draymond the Draymond right? Yeah, yeah, I think there's a lot of interesting question marks around all of that, like actual roster construction 
with Ben Simmons will be really interesting because he's very different than James Harden offensively. I mean, he has a different skill set. So how does that mesh with two guys that are ball heavy guys, um, which has been an issue before, like that's been Kyrie and, and Durant for as great as they are, they haven't really meshed together, you know, to be that super, super duo. Yes. they are a duo like superstars, but if mm. you actually look at it, you know, like Middleton and Giannis work really well together because of their skill sets are so different. We yeah. haven't seen Durant and Kyrie. And the scary part about it is, and this is a knock on the nets, the sample size is so small. And we don't, because of a lot of different reasons, injuries, COVID, deciding not to show up. Those are probably the big three. We haven't really given it enough sample size to see if yeah. it can work. Cause I mean, you know, but so far it really hasn't, it's just been okay. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, but it is nice to uh, talk about actual roster and, and uh, rotations and real basketball talk for Especially September, them. September 5th when we're recording this, you know, it's, it's nice. It's nice for the Nets to do that. Nick, uh, I don't think I'm ready for that yet because we got to see what happens with Randall if he gets traded this week, but we'll see. But you know what also is nice, Mike? What's that? We are sponsored by DraftKings Sportsbook. So football fans, the, the first Sunday of the NFL season is here and DraftKings Sportsbook at an official sports betting partner of the NFL is giving new customers a can't miss offer to celebrate the return of the NFL season. Right now, new customers can bet just $5 and get $200 in free bets instantly. And as an added bonus for week one, everyone can experience the thrill of draft DraftKings early win promotion. It's simple. Bet on an NFL team to win. If your team leads by 10 at any point during the game, you get paid instantly, even if your team loses. So you just got to get up 10 points at one point. That's great. That's great. Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app now and use promo code BWF for bad weather fans to get $200 in free bets instantly. When you place a $5 bet this Sunday, that's code BWF for bad weather fans. It's BWF only at DraftKings Sportsbook, an official sports betting partner of the NFL. Minimum age and eligibility restrictions apply. See show notes for details. Okay, Mike. So I have a question for you. Yeah. What is the more awkward situation in the NBA right now? I found the four most awkward situations between players and management and coaching in the, in the NBA right now, in my opinion. Okay. Is it the Knicks with management because they tried to trade RJ Barrett and then extended it They tried to trade Mitchell Robinson and then extended him, tried to trade Emmanuel quickly. Obi top and everybody on the roster was up for grabs and now they just got to show up to camp. Right. Is it the Celtics who tried to trade Jalen Brown for Kevin Durant after leading him to the after helping leading them to the finals? Right. Is it the Nets with their mess? We all know the story there. I don't have to go into that. Or is it the Suns with DeAndre Ayton, where last year they didn't extend him and then they said go find somebody and he did, and then they signed him to a restricted free agent deal, and now they're back and trying to run it back. Essentially. What do you think is the most awkward situation? Probably the Nets because of the the Durant Nash stuff. Mm-hmm. And I, I would say the Nets won. Which I, mm-hmm. I, I think with everything that's gone on with the Nets, I think Cam Thomas kind of alluded to it during the um, that that summer league game where he, he kind of discredited Nash. Uh, I would say the, the Nets have the most awkwardness followed by, I don't think the Knicks stuff is really there. I think the Knicks, well, the Randall I thing, I, the thing with the Knicks is, yeah, I guess probably the Knicks, Suns, and then the, and then the, and then the Celtics. I think the Celtics will be fine. I don't, yeah. I think they're a rock. Cause they're just like, well, it was Kevin Durant. We had to try kind of a thing. Right. Yeah. And I think, I think they'll be good. And it was basically just Jalen Brown and nobody else was really featured in trades. Um, yeah. They said him. no to smart. I think, they'll get, I think yeah. they'll get over that. I think they'll okay. get over that quick. Cause I think they're mm-hmm. just, they're just a, they're a good unit there. It's probably Nets, but I think the Nets have the ability because of their talent to let, in my view, have that kind of linger quick if they can nip it in the bud and get right. Where the Nick thing has more of a lingering factor because it's different, right? It's the Knicks have a kind of two different visions going on at the same time where there is some younger players that the fans want to see on the court. Mm-hmm. And then you have management, which seems to be, leaning towards playing their high paid veterans. So that's something that could just go on for a while. And I'm hoping that the nets just kind of end it early. And then that might be just be something that resurfaces later. Okay. Okay. I think the sun's thing also it's awkward, but I think that was more awkward last year 
when they didn't want to pay Aiton, and now it's just he's a restricted free agent, and they matched it, and everybody's happy and coming back to uh, back to 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 the camp to camp. The Knicks thing I think is super awkward because it's only a few weeks away from camp, and you don't have a lot of time to get over it. And but we also don't know what was going on behind the scenes. They might have been totally you know straightforward with with RJ and all of them. But at the same time, you can't tell me that R.J. Barrett's like, you know, he's happy he got paid, of course. But you can't tell me he's like super loyal to the organization anymore after they tried to trade him and they wouldn't include a, a fourth draft pick. You know, they would rather trade him than include a fourth draft pick or more. You know, so it's just it's it unprotected draft pick, I should say, or more, which is which is bizarre. And, you know, I'll take to my grave that the Knicks got cocky and overplayed their hand throughout the whole summer. Showing up at the playoff games with for with between the Jazz and them and the Mavericks, you know we we all you know connected that to Brunson, but maybe it was about Donovan Mitchell to get in his face and ear and getting his ear, you know, and that might have pissed off the Jazz too. It started from from behind, and then you know you're you're lowballing them all summer with picks, and you know, and then all of a sudden the Ainge they, they dared Ainge to find another suitor, and he did. We've been through this a million times. I just feel like they got too cocky, and I think that because of that, it might have like rubbed some players the wrong way. And, you know, we'll see what happens now with Tibbs, who what doesn't hold Randall accountable because he's part of the family. So, like, let's see what the hell happens. That's just a big mess. So whatever. So I, I think so I think the Knicks are the most awkward situation. The Nets is pretty awkward because it's just weird. But they're all professionals and they're they've been through so much already in their careers. Durant and Kyrie and even Ben Simmons is just kind of like, yo, let's just show up and let's just play. Mm, exactly. I just want to play basketball. Like, all right, this sucks. We're stuck here, but let's just do it, you know, kind of a thing. Uh, we have nothing else to lose. Kind of like Kawhi in Toronto. Like he didn't want to, he remember he missed the whole year with the Spurs wanted, right. the injury. He didn't want to play. Then they trade him to Toronto. He didn't really want to go there, but he didn't want to lose two years of his career. So he showed up and won a championship and then went to LA, <laughs> you know? So mm-hmm. hopefully that happens for you. And I mean, I hope it doesn't, but in your, for your sake, you know, that that's your, the best case scenario. If they, they leave after this year and they win a championship, you're like, bye, <laughs> you know? Right. So bad, you know, weather, bad weather fans, episode 282 is Dayron Sharp the future. <laughs> can we trade him for, can we trade him away? You know, yeah. we do, we'll be Knicks talk basically. Yeah. yeah. I hear you. It'd be funny. We always talk about and Knicks fans always make the joke at a Nets parade. There'll be nobody there, but you know, it'd be funny at a Nets parade. If they're all demanding a trade after they win the championship, no players are there. <laughs> you know, yeah, right. we won the championship and oh. then goodbye. <laughs> I'll see you later. So Dude, I, I cannot, Whatever. I would do anything to hear those Nick jokes. Oh, that'd be yeah. the best. <laughs> right. I mean, it would be the best. Like, well, at least you have Quentin Grimes, Nick. Nope. You know, like, <laughs> right. No one was at that parade. Well, you know, I was asshole. <laughs> you know, you were partying with Sean Marks and Richard Jefferson. <laughs> like having a great time. <laughs> I always, that always, that, that the other thing, and that's my new defense for people when they're always like, oh, the Nets have no titles. You, you don't know what it's like to have a title. I don't even watch yeah. your titles on DVD, you know, <laughs> fuck off. Give me a break. Yeah. It's you not know, even I, standard definition. It's like you can't even see it. It's like <laughs> right. I'm not saying who's got a better history. I'm not going to yeah. have that argument. But don't don't tell me that you know what the feelings like when you saw right. the Knicks win the championship. We're in the same boat on that. Yeah, Sorry. we definitely are. Definitely are. We, we, I mean, we are. and we've both seen two title teams, like two championship Eastern Conference championship teams. We both right. seen two of those, so we're equal there. One that had no chance, and one right. that had a chance. Right. Same thing. So. It is what it is. So football season's around the corner. Both and, ruined you know, by the Spurs. Both, both the ruined Spurs. by the Spurs. Yes. Yeah, so well, we Ewing lot... injury kind of ruined that too. Well, I'm you just, know, yeah. The Eastern Conference the, final. The but just... it is what it is. Yeah. The Spurs uh, beat them. But yeah. Going down the my So NFL board, season, if you're going to place your bets, you know, make sure you use DraftKings and promo code BWF. But, you know, we're all Jets and Giants fans. We haven't talked a lot of football this summer or baseball as much as we usually do because of the Knicks and the Nets drama all summer. But yep. we usually talk all sports on this show, not just Knicks and Nets. So as a Jets fan and Mike's a Giants fan, I just wanted to go into some football here, or we wanted to. Uh, Mike, what's your prediction for the Giants this year, the record, and what do you think is going to happen with Daniel Jones and all that? Oh, uh, Daniel Jones isn't very good. I mean, that's the problem. Maybe he'll – I think for him, he's just been in such a shit situation with New York for so many different OCs, so many different Mm -hmm. coaches. It's been a disaster. Now, he's also injury prone too, so that's been tough. I think if things started from the gate in a little better situation – Maybe he could have been better. He's not one of those guys. He's not a quarterback where you take a superstar quarterback and you put him in a bad spot. He just dissolves all of it and puts deodorant on the whole situation. He's not that kind of guy. He needs help around him. Offensive line has been brutal. So I think now this is probably the end of it for him. Uh, I think best case scenario, if the Giants need to figure out contract with him for long term, something went hella right. Uh, the Giants are just too young, you know, like where they, they added a solid draft and they added the positions they needed in the trenches and and things like that. But other than I mean, other than that, this team's void of talent. 
uh, you've seen everything from them with Ken- Kenny Galladay has been a disaster in these preseason games. I think Saquon will have a bounce back year. I think he's not as bad as he showcased. He's not going to be the second pick in the draft level, Barry Sanders talent, but I think he'll have an upgraded season. Uh, but without the direction of what Daniel Jones is, it's weird because he's kind of like the giants are in a rebuild, but they've got a guy that's not quite like bad quarterback. It's not like, they're not at the Mitchell Trubisky filling in for a couple of games spot, but they're not at the, we have our star quarterback. So I, I think for them, six wins is probably on point. Um, but you hope to see just some improvement from the younger players and then some questions answered with Daniel Jones. Yeah, I'm right there with you with the Giants. And I'm right there with the Jets as it's six, five or six wins is, is, is probably their ceiling. Seven if everything goes great. But with the Zach Wilson injury, Joe Flat. Yeah, and Joe Flacco sucks. Like, stop with this. Oh, we can win 10 games with Flacco. No, you're not. You're not winning 10 games with Flacco. You might get 10 good drives with Flacco. You know, it's just it's stop it. And, you know, they have a lot of offensive weapons. They have a good offensive line. But the defense is kind of sketchy. And you have a defensive coach that had the one of the worst defenses in the NFL last year. You can't tell me, like, somebody like Rex Ryan, an actual good defensive coach, would have not had that team as the worst def- defense in the NFL. You know, the year, the, the Idzik year, the Jets had no talent. And Rex had the defense playing well, you know, so it's just there's always like a solid is just one of those guys. I think he's too nice of a guy. But you know what? I, I'm just I want to see them play and I want to see how it's going to go because they have a lot of offensive weapons with Garrett Wilson, the rookie with uh, what's his name? The, the the running back is slipping my mind. The rookie. Oh, geez, I forgot his name. Um, and uh, he's 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 good, though. I, I really do like him. I just number 20 is killing me. I just can't think of his name. And, uh, you know, Elijah Moore is good. And, and, you know, like I like all these players and they're doing well, but in the preseason, but with Flacco and then Wilson, I don't know if Wilson's even that good. He's not accurate. He's like he's like a bag of bones He's always getting hurt. So we'll see what happens there. So uh, I'm, I'm definitely seeing, you know, five to seven wins for them. So which sucks. Another bad year. You're talking about Brees Hall. Brees Hall, yes, thank you, Brees Hall. That's the guy. I, I know who he is. Don't yeah, kill me. I just totally, totally slipped my mind. I've been basketball, basketball, basketball the last two weeks. It is of... crazy that football starts. I mean, we yeah. said it before with uh, DraftKings, and you know, check it out. But it's like, holy shit! It yeah, football. You yeah, know, and it's, we've been uh... so we've been so wrapped up in the NBA stuff, and I'm going to be away, uh, going away on vacation. So next week, Mike will have a fill-in host for me. So that'll be fun. Brees Hall is going to host. Brees Hall, yes. He's going to host. Just to spite you for not remembering his name. He's <laughs> yeah. coming on bad. What and I'm so man. mad because he's actually like one of my most, like I'm the most excited like player that I am about any, mostly any player on the team is probably him. You know, so that's what's funny that I forgot his name, but whatever. The, the buzz is killed with the Zach Wilson part. That, that's totally. a buzz killer. But totally. at least it's not a, you know, he's not out for the entire season. So it's not a, yeah. that would be. Then it would be the worst. At least now you have hope that. Right. I mean, that would just be disa- so bad but and annoying. You can't. You, I got. I hear like I. I love Joe Beningo. He's one of my favorites. But it, when he's on, like he's telling me, like I've listened to his podcast, the Can't Wait podcast. He's like one of my my idols in radio. And but he's telling me he's like, oh, the Jets can win ten games with Flacco. You they, they need to go into Baltimore and beat the Ravens. With, I'm like, are you crazy? <laughs> They're not beating the Ravens in Baltimore with Joe Flacco. You, you know, know maybe what? they'll win the second game with Cleveland with no Watson, but like. They're not winning that first game. They're going to lose like 40 to 40 to three or some no, crap. You know man. Like that, it's just insane. <laughs> that feels like to me, one of those people that do what are those stupid things called the, um, where you pick the team each week and then you can't use them again. I'm oh, uh, on that. suicide or survival survival. No, right. It, it yeah. seems like that seems like one of those, like everybody's going to pick the Ravens and then you turn on <laughs> CBS and the four, you hear, you know, Kevin Harlan, like it's 20 to 17 jets with one fifty two to go. Lamar Jackson's final drive. We'll see what happens. Uh, anyway, this has been Bad Weather Fans, episode 134. Uh, thank you guys for all your support on Apple. Follow us, YouTube. Make sure you go ahead and subscribe. Give a thumbs up. Leave a comment in the Apple podcast section and download these episodes. That goes a long way, and it helps out here on the Bad Weather Fans podcast. Richard Jefferson, Chris Childs, Carrie Kittles, just to name a few of our other brief uh, of our other previous episodes. If you want to check out those great interviews and Alex, good luck to your jets. Good luck on your, uh, have a fun time on your trip and uh, go nets. Yeah, no, go, no, go nets. You just tricked me into saying that. And Trace McGrady and Evan Roberts and Greg Giannotti. We had a lot of guests. So check us out go back and listen, download. Thank you for listening. This has been bad weather fans. (laughs) Episode one thirty four. We'll see y'all later.